Yeah, yeah. We've got travel on the brain. We've switched into the mode of getting ready for our next adventure. In this video, we're going to share a few categories of items and travel gear that we're starting to get ready, such as our travel wardrobes, our luggage, and car seats for the kids. And this is the first in a series of videos that we will be making specific for traveling long term here in 2021. One, two, three, Aloha! Aloha. We are Kencho Quest. We travel to open our minds and our hearts. Let's express around the world! The easiest is going to be my baby stuff because we've kept it really minimal with his newborn, zero to three, three to six, six months stuff. By the time we travel, he'll probably only need his six months clothes. My daughter's growing really fast, getting tall, so she's gonna need like some new pants or shorts. I already ordered her a skirt, but basically she's got tops, but we need to update the bottom half of her wardrobe. Then for my son, he took a bunch of his clothes to go visit his cousin, but he's got shirts, he needs to update his shorts. So we gotta get minimalist wardrobes put together for each of them. For myself, I've still been wearing my same minimalist travel wardrobe that I did a video on before, but after two, three years wearing those items, I'm getting a little bored of them, so I've been ordering myself some new clothes. <laughs> Got an excuse to do that now. For George, he has a lot of merino wool clothes from Unbound, so he's almost got his perfect wardrobe ready to go. Got a brand new tank top. I haven't even worn this one yet, so this is going to be really nice. and. Even though it's just a tank top, I expect this to last at least a year. And here's some shirts that I've already been wearing for almost two years. This black one here. And here's another version of it in this kind of grayish color. So Unbound Merino wool. And these are 100% wool, by the way. And these are my new shorts. I've only worn these a little bit, but these are super comfy and they got a little bit of stretch to them. So these are gonna be a nice new addition as well. And what's really nice is if you have to like wash these and you need them the next day, the chances are they'll dry super fast. Like especially if you got a fan and dry like in an hour. Compare that to cotton. Next up, we have to decide how are we going to pack our stuff? How many suitcases are we going to take? What day pack for each family member? Before our last trip, George and I tried so many day packs. We researched, we ordered, we returned, and we still weren't really happy with the packs we no. took. So if you can recommend any day packs, let us know in the comments below. I like a backpack, but I still like it to be a bit stylish and feminine and functional. <laughs> What's really important though, is it needs to be able to carry a laptop. George carries camera gear. I carry day stuff for the kids, water bottles, snacks, sweaters, things we'll need when we're out and about. But that pack also has to be for travel days, taking things on the airplane as well. We've got all these suitcases. Well, we're only taking these three though. I don't know about that. I want to take my stuff. <laughs> this time we accumulated a lot of nice stuff. Our linen sheets, our wool futons, and I don't know. It's just going to be hard this time to get rid of everything. Do you remember how difficult it is to take all that stuff? I like my stuff. Oh baby, we like our stuff. At least we don't take too much baby stuff. We'll probably make a separate video on traveling with a baby, but we don't take like pack and plays and all that excess <laughs> baby gear. So he'll be easy to pack light for. It's my stuff I want to keep. Since we're slow traveling, we will be staying in places maybe three, four months at a time, we hope. And because of that, having this much luggage may not be as big of an issue for us, but I still think it's too much. See, in general, I'm a minimalist, but now that we've settled down for this year or so, we've accumulated some really nice stuff. So it's just hard that every time we return to the U.S., we buy things. Every time we leave, we get rid of it all. And this time, I'm just wishing we could keep some of those things. But as far as what we pack, we bring clothing for each family member. We bring a set of toiletries for a save kit that we share among everyone. And then we actually bring some kitchen stuff along. We did a separate video showing unusual things we pack for long-term travel. But highly recommend. Yeah. And we will be bringing those things again and maybe even a little more this time. Because when you stay in the Airbnbs, you never know what's going to be provided, how clean, what quality it's going to be. So we do bring quite a bit of cooking stuff along right. with us. And of course there's electronics. We make videos. We need to have cameras, multiple different cameras. Last time I really regretted not bringing lights along, but we probably can't bring our lights again too. The laptops, you know, things for doing work on. So there's just a lot of stuff. 
For the kids, now that our oldest is seven, I think it's about time that he learns to be responsible for his own stuff. So he has the smallest 21 inch rolling suitcase. And I think he'll be allowed to have his stuff in this and then one backpack. We need to get him a new day pack backpack because right now he just has a tiny toddler size one that he took traveling before. If you have any recommendations of a comfortable day pack for a seven year old, please let us know in the comments. We need it to be able to fit his iPad in. Right. So it needs to have a sleeve for his iPad and then he would carry things like a sweatshirt, his toys, but I want all of his toys, all of his clothes to be able to fit into his little suitcase and his backpack. No sneaking them into your <laughs> bags like last time. There has to be a confined designated space when it comes to kids or else their things will just keep accumulating and accumulating. They'll get more and more toys. So the rule has to be, it needs to fit in your suitcase or your backpack. If it doesn't fit, you need to get rid of something else to make room. Easier for her to say, I'm the one that has to deal with the screaming kid. <laughs> it's not easy every time we pick up and move and the kids have to minimize their stuff. I love decluttering. I'm happy to go through their closet, get rid of the old stuff. If my kids are around, they'll be like, no, I want to get that. I love that. And it's like, well, it doesn't fit you. It's torn. You've got slime all stuck into those shorts, but it's kind of easier to do it without them or when they're so young that they don't have a say in minimizing their stuff. Yeah, I think our toddler's going to want to pack all her toys and that is just not going to happen. Something in it. Something's in it? Yeah. What's in your suitcase, Haru? Uh, help me open it. <laughs> What's in it? Toys. Toys? Toys? Yeah. Are you taking those traveling? We need to reduce though. One of these suitcases is half full with kind of like winter clothes and things we don't really wear. So since we mostly travel in hot tropical climates, we're going to have to decide like how many of the warmer weather things do we each take one jacket? Well, we have a couple nice jackets a piece. So are we each taking two jackets with us? Do I need to get rid of my Uggs boots because those aren't really practical for traveling? You know. It really depends on where you're going. We know we're going to go to a hot climate location, though there is also a chance we may go to some cold climate places. But I suggest that we always pack for where we're immediately going. And then if we need the cold weather stuff later, then we'll deal with it later. Later time. And that's worked out in the Yeah, past. it's worked out really well Just for us. Just buying things when we actually need them. I did learn a lesson that every family member should have at least one pair of long pants. When we unexpectedly had to return from Malaysia to the United States because of COVID, we made that decision in like a couple days and it was like, pack, get on a plane, go. The weather was so much colder when we arrived in California, especially at night. And my son didn't even have a single pair of long pants. I ended up having to sew him a pair of pants and he was wearing his dad's socks up as long as possible to keep him warm. So you should have at least like one long sleeve shirt, one hoodie sweater, one pair of long pants and a pair of socks per family member. That's like my minimum. And then if the rest is tank top, short sleeve shirt, dresses for us girls, shorts, that's okay. Also a consideration in choosing wardrobe is where you're going to be visiting if there's certain rules, like if you're going to be going in Buddhist temples, your shoulders should be covered, a long skirt is appropriate for women, to enter the Grand Palace in Bangkok, Thailand, men should be wearing long pants, no shorts, no shorts. they will turn you away, they will not allow you in, so everybody should have like a temple outfit as well. Right. And then shoes is a big consideration, each family member should have a good pair of walking shoes because we do a ton of walking. We're usually walking out every day. And then a pair of shoes that can get wet for going in the water. Swimsuit each. Yeah. As far as the shoes go, we'll be making a separate video on our shoes because we wear minimalist shoes only as well. And because of that, we're able to pack more and they're lighter and they're just better for your feet, we feel like. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah it's great. It's great overall. Again, two pairs of shoes per family member is probably good. Okay, I'm right. going to be eating my words later when I want to eat more shoes. Also regarding the suitcases, like with, with Kaisho's, even though this is a carry-on size, this is 21 inch, one thing to really take into consideration is when you are flying international flights, the carry-on size is smaller than the United States. So our preference is to not take any suitcases on the plane because it's just way too much of a hassle trying to deal with that. And then if you get busted, you might have to pay a fee 
right there at the gate and it's going to be a lot. But we each take a backpack onto the airplane and then I wasn't having our kids do that previously because anything they take is something I have to remember to get it taken off the plane. So annoying, if I'm not there, things get left behind. And so sometimes if we are just gonna go for like a two or three day, you know, like get away to somewhere, then, then we're, we're gonna do carry on only, but we have backpacks specific for that. We're still not gonna take any suitcases because it's just too much of a hassle for us. And we have an Osprey Farpoint uh, 40 liter backpack, which is great for that. And then if each of us take a backpack, that's plenty, even for a family of five. Yeah, for little side trips, like three, five days a week, I can totally do the minimalist packing carry on only. It's just when it's your whole life, your whole home, you're packing up, yeah. but it's a lot harder to do that. Well, that's also, again, why we wear wool. It's very thin and yes. very light. We can pack a lot more with it too. And then, like I said, rewearable, so. For example, this cotton thing that I'm wearing is so thick and bulky to pack. It is not a good idea, not recommended. A thin wool dress can roll, roll up so much thinner. Are you bringing that? <laughs> she brought it last time, and I think that weighs like two and a half pounds. It's like a kilo. Yeah. It takes a long time to dry too. That too. You do that want too. to think about washing and drying. You may have cold water only in the washing machine, or you may have no washing machine and be hand washing. That's one reason wool is so great. Right. I could just hand wash our day's worth of clothes, hang it up, have it clean the next day. The drying factor is huge, especially if you need to go somewhere the next day and, and you just wash your clothes and it's the middle of the night. Oh, that's a terrible feeling, knowing you're going to be wearing wet clothes in the morning. Uh, but they dry as you're wearing them. Yeah. Another consideration when traveling with kids is the car seats. And this will be our first time traveling with three kids. And so our son has been using a Ride Safer Travel Vest for the past Three, three years three traveling, years. and that's been great because it's so much lighter weight, compact. It's great for taking Uber, Grab, Lyft. You can just use it in the car. We can pop it in our day pack afterwards. Our daughter currently has a Costco car seat, which are really lightweight and good as travel car seats. But I'm not sure that I want to have to take two car seats with us, so we might switch her over to a Ride Safer travel vest as well because they start from three years old and she's probably within the weight and height requirements to use that already. For this one, we got a brand new Duna. car seat stroller convertible thing. So it just pops in between the two configurations. And that way, again, if we wanna hop in a grab taxi, when we get out at the mall or the destination we're going to, we can just push it around as a stroller during the day. And then when we're ready to take a taxi again, we'll have his car seat with us, so. If he's still fitting within that when we head out, I'm really excited to be able to use that. It's been super convenient so far. Yeah. It's really important to take into consideration the weight of your car seat. So if you're thinking you got one already and if it's heavy, like I say you pick it up and you take it and you walk across the room for it. If you start to feel any weight, get rid of it. Get rid of it because you are going to <laughs> regret it later. For instance, and we were in Hong Kong, we arrived there in the middle of the night, and I just had to walk a short distance, maybe, I don't know, a few hundred feet, I'd say, and just having to carry this car seat along with pushing a suitcase was the most ridiculous thing ever, you know? And I said, never again, never, ever, ever again. If we had something like the Costco Sonera, I could have just carried it like this, and it weighs like, I don't know, three or four pounds, super light. So that is the way to go, either something super light or the ride saver vest if your kid is old enough and weighs enough. We'll be doing more detailed reviews of the travel gear that we've used so far and also showing you more of what we do end up packing once we get that all figured out. If there's any item in particular that you really want to know more about, please let us know in the comments so we can update you in a future video. Please subscribe for more travel tips and inspiration. Aloha!